Hi, everybody. We've got a bunch of people already joining in on us today to, to listen to you guys talk about um, longevity for vegan athletes. So if that's not the class that you're looking for, you're in the wrong spot. Um, real quickly, I'm going to introduce myself and the series that we're putting on, talk a little bit about Gnarly the Company, and then I'll turn it over to Trevor and Jesse, and they'll take it from there. So I'm Jason Hall. I'm the CFO of Gnarly Nutrition. We are a we have a full line of all natural NSF certified uh, sports nutrition products, and we design nutrition for athletes and individuals who, who care a lot about what goes in their bodies. We pride ourselves in offering clean, honest nutrition that tastes great. Um, we're about halfway through our two months of clinics here that deals with preventing injuries, um, dealing with injuries when they happen, you know, recovery tips in general. Um, as, as well as establishing and maintaining baseline health and nutrition. We kind of call this whole concept longevity in sport. Uh, we hope that the information that's passed for these clinics is useful to you and it'll help you perform at your best throughout the rest of the year and the rest of your, and for years to come. Um, we have a really good lineup here. I encourage you to sign up for as many classes as you like. Our newest product, uh, not only College and Pro is now available. Um, we think it's important to understand why we take something, um, not just take it because we or somebody else told you so. Early collagen helps with injury prevention and repair for tendons and ligaments, ultimately keeping you doing more of what you love. And it fits right in with the theme of longevity in sports. So following this clinic, we'll email you a recording of it, as well as provide an opportunity for you to try out Collagen Pro at a discount, along with another free gift. So watch your emails. Um, last couple of quick items to be aware of. You can follow us on Instagram at Gnarly Nutrition. Uh, we'll be announcing a big giveaway. It's kind of underway, so keep an eye out for that. And lastly, if you enjoy the clinic, uh, go ahead and, and screenshot it or jot down something useful and post it on the socials. You can tag us, tag the presenters. That's all good. You'll see a short survey at the end of the clinic that takes just a minute or two to fill out, and we'd love to hear uh, any feedback that you have. And so at the bottom of your screen, um, there's a button that says Q&A, so go ahead and use that if you have questions for everybody. Um, that's all you have to listen to me. Now I'm going to turn it over to uh, what you're really um, waiting for here. So Trevor Fox is a plant-based trail and ultra runner based in Ogden, Utah. Vegan for over 10 years, he considers his diet and running career to be mutually dependent. While he enjoys racing many distances on any train, his niche in, is in the mountains mountainous 100 mile distances. When he's not running around in the foothills or trying to keep up with his three kids, you'll probably find him in the kitchen exploring one of the million ways to prepare a potato. <laughs> and ultra runner, personal trainer, and nutritionist, Jesse Rich has spent the last decade studying human disease and performance. Since graduating in 2016 with his master's degree in nutrition, Jesse has worked with a wide array of people with different needs and goals. In 2018, Jesse began Forward Progression, a coaching company based on sports nutrition, strength training, and trail running. He continues to compete as an ultra runner, winning races such as the Wasatch 100 miler. With no further ado from me, I'm going to turn it over to Trevor and Jesse. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I just want to make sure you guys can see my screen. Is that right? We do. You yep. can see the presentation. Good. Awesome. Thanks for the intro. And uh, interestingly enough, Trevor's also won the Wasatch. That's how we first met. And it's that's what I love about this sport is we were like competitors in the same race. And now we've become friends and been running outside of competition and uh, both, you know, share this kind of plant based philosophy. So it's really cool. And again, that's what I love about ultra running it's it's competitive in the moment but really it's about uh just making new friends so i'm happy i've met trevor and uh we'll get going on the presentation so you know <clears throat> longevity and vegan go well together uh if you're familiar with plant-based research uh it's pretty clear that the more plants you eat you know the longer you can live in fact it's not just about performance it's also about disease prevention it's about uh, living a healthy life. So uh, those those words go really well together. Um, I graduated in 2016 with my master's in nutrition from a naturopathic medical school. 
Uh, so it's more of a holistic approach to nutrition, which, which I really enjoy uh, seeing it a different way. Um, I've been vegetarian since 2016, pescatarian before that kind of worked my way up. Uh, and I say almost entirely vegan since 2018 because, um, you know, I do travel and sometimes it's difficult for me to maintain veganism. I guess I'm kind of weak in that sense. I travel to Europe every summer and it can be kind of hard there. Um, so not 100%, but at home, uh, I'm, I'm completely vegan. So, uh, you know, I've been working through that and figuring out from vegetarian to vegan, how can I maintain this lifestyle? And it's actually been a nice transition and it's been pretty easy to also cut out those other things. Uh, you know, the, the dairy and the eggs, um, vegetarian, uh, is a lot easier. Vegan can be a little more restrictive, but it's totally doable if you know how to set up your diet. So I've been working with vegan and non-vegan athletes. You obviously don't need to be vegan uh, to work with me. I work with high fat athletes as well. Uh, whatever, wherever you are on the spectrum, whatever diet you like, uh, I work, I work with you. So, uh, you know, even just incorporating more plants, I encourage, but again, it's really what you want to try out. Uh, I've been competing uh, probably since, uh, 2016 as well, like Trevor. And, uh, I just became a NASA, uh, personal certified personal trainer as of, uh, this year. So check out what I do. I offer coaching in kind of a wide range of options for athletes and non-athletes alike. So check that out. And that was me in, uh, Orcas Island. That was a really fun race. So why vegan For, for performance gains athletics. Okay, well, first, inherently high in carbohydrates, which are friends to, uh, to us as, as athletes. So remember like carbs are not always the enemy. And in fact, in athletics, especially kind of higher volume, higher intensity stuff, they're not our enemy, they're, they're our friend. So uh, also, you know, high in antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and water. These molecules keep athletes strong, hydrated, and recovered. Okay, so think about plants that have antioxidants, and those serve as almost like a mini vaccine for our immune system, kind of keeping our immune system active, right? Think of it as plants have their own immune system. Uh, they're defending off uh, predators as well. So they, they build up this immune system for them themselves. And then we consume those plants and kind of get that immune stimulus as well, right? So animals can't give us that. Like, yeah, they have the immune system as well, but it doesn't transfer over to us like it does uh, for, for plants. This is called hormesis, okay? And antioxidants and polyphenols do that for us where animals, animal products can't. So it's a nice protective effect. So you really wanna get a lot of whole foods in your diet. Less saturated fat, you know, and this is controversial, but a lot of research suggests that thickens the blood and, and can potentially cause disease, especially with the heart, right? If your blood is not flowing well and it's somewhat clogged, you're not going to have great circulation getting to the most vital organ, which is the heart, right? So that's really important. No cholesterol. That's what's so beautiful. Cholesterol is produced in uh, animals. So without animal products, you don't get cholesterol in your diet. And again, that's been shown to increase risk of heart disease and stroke. So you're increasing what's good and you're decreasing what could potentially be bad, okay? So fiber, fiber is another element of the vegan diet that is wonderful. Uh, because fiber is so abundant in plant foods, especially whole foods, you're really not gonna lack fiber. Uh, and in fact, some people can, can overdo it. You can almost get too much um, so, so it's, it's really important to find your sweet spot, uh, but fiber is incredibly good for you, right? It passes through the large intestine undigested where your bacteria, millions in your, in your uh, GI tract are, are, are living. They feed off of these fibers and create healthy byproducts, okay? So butyrate is a well-known uh, short chain fatty acid that's incredibly beneficial to the body. And you could say that's the bacteria's poop, right? They've eaten the fiber. 
they ferment the fiber and what they produce is butyrate, which in turn is very good for our body, okay? So it's like a fertilizer for our intestines and for our whole body. Whereas meat and other things can cause things like uh, TMAO, which is also a bacterial byproduct that can, that can clog arteries and things like that. So it's a, it, fiber is a really beneficial way to grow your bacterial colonies and keep them healthy and happy. So you, you have a lot of good bacteria in your gut, which we are seeing more and more in research is linked to overall good health. So yes, it's important for overall digestion, right? Uh, as Trevor mentioned, or will mention, excuse me, on, on, on his presentation, is he, you know, it, his digestion got better with this type of diet. And a lot of that can be uh, attributed to fiber. And it, it really helps your bowels kind of normalize and be, uh, you know, working the way they should. So that's obviously important, but don't forget the good bacterial aspect of fiber. That's, that's huge. So if you heard, hear the words prebiotics, right? You'll see supplements with prebiotics and probiotics. The difference is prebiotics are the fibers that are feeding the bacteria and probiotics are bacteria themselves. So the prebiotics you can get just through food, but also through supplementation and probiotics you can get through supple supplementation uh, only. So, so this is always interesting, you know, um, <laughs> I feel like through the history of my life and my journey through plant-based eating, oh, vegans are so unhealthy though. You know, vegans, they, they look frail, they look sick. Um, you know, the environmental reasons and the ethical reasons to go vegan, those are beautiful reasons to go vegan. And that's part of the reason why I am plant-based myself for those reasons. But you also need to take into account the nutritional aspect. You know, those are important reasons to be vegan, but you cannot like, neglect your nutrition and health. You have, to, you have to make sure you're getting in what you need. So French fries, vegan, you know, Coca-Cola, vegan, all these things, Oreos are vegan now, right? So all these products that are vegan aren't necessarily healthy. So you can absolutely be vegan and, un and be unhealthy. So what do these bad products uh, do to us? Well, they can mess up our insulin secretion. They can mess up our, our pancreas and our whole endocrine system. You know, the endocrine system, our hormonal system, really it's, it, it's constantly signal, signaling. So when one problem happens, it can cause all these other problems in the hormonal system. So when insulin's off, we have issues with cortisol. We have is, issues with testosterone, right? So Insulin is a huge hormone and it's related to our eating and especially carbohydrates. So if we get that, that hormone off, it has this kind of cascading effect of messing up all our other endocrine hormones, okay? So mock meats, I love them. You'll see me eat them uh, on, on occasion and through my Instagram and stuff. Uh, they can be very tasty, but you should eat them in moderation, right? They're extremely processed. Uh, you know, I did mention that uh, whole foods are low in saturated fat. These mock meats are typically made with a lot of coconut oil, so they do have a lot of saturated fat. So be careful with the consumption of, of mock meats. Don't, don't go overboard, right? Not breakfast, lunch, and dinner with the mock meats, okay? Uh, and, and reduce the processed foods. So again, basing your diet off of whole foods, fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, legumes, and seeds will ensure that you're getting good nutrients, well-rounded diet without all the bad stuff that can come from a vegan diet, right? It's not perfect if you don't make it perfect, right? It's totally your choice on, on what you do with it. It can be uh, totally processed or totally whole food. You know, I, I do think whole food 100% can be difficult to maintain for me myself. And so that's why occasionally I'll do the mock meat and stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, really be careful with the processed foods. So malnourishment, like I said, I feel like when I first was transitioning, everybody said vegans get sick. They don't get the nourishment they need. Uh, that's really easy to pin on, on this type of eating. But, uh, you know, a lot of studies have pointed out that omnivores actually suffer from more vitamin and mineral deficiencies than vegans do because you're eating such a wide array, array of plants, fruits and vegetables. You're really getting a wide variety of nutrients. And I feel like 
when I used to eat meat, you know, the meat portion of your meal provided so much of the meal that you're not as worried about vegetables, right? Like a simple hamburger with, you know, uh, green beans as a side. You feel like that's a full meal, you know, you've got your main dish and a side. Well, <laughs> when I took out the meat, you know, I was forced to really kind of look at my plate and be like, okay, I've got to fill this with pure plants. What am I going to do here? And, you know, plants are rich in vitamins and minerals. So I'm filling my plant, my, 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 my plate with a huge salad, right? It's no longer the side. It becomes the main dish. So I feel like that can happen a lot with omnivores is they're kind of just making meat their main source and forgetting about all the, all the plants that they need, the variety of plants they need. Again, there are, you know, there are benefits and, 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 and nutrients to meat, but you can't depend on meat to get everything you need, right? You need a wide variety of plants as well. So myself, I struggle with, with that. And once I took it out, I, I really started incorporate, incorporating more of the good stuff. So um, they have everything, right? Everyone's like, oh, but you know, there's, there's not all these vitamins and minerals in a vegan diet. I've studied this for a long time. Um, really vitamin B12 is the only thing that's <clears throat> like essentially absent in the plant kingdom, right? It's a bacteria in the, in the gut of animals that produces vitamin B12, right? So it's not really existent in the plant kingdom. Microbes in, in, in soil can produce B12. So sometimes people are like, you know, you can eat your produce dirty and keep those that B12 on there and that's how people believe that uh, plant-based uh, civilizations, obviously they weren't entirely plant-based, but they're getting a lot of their B12 from the soil without cleaning the produce very well. So now we have to, we have to supplement. We have to take B12, uh, you know, talk to a professional about how much, I could help you with how much you should take. But as an athlete in general, no matter what diet you're on, we're all using more of the recommended daily allowance you know, nutrients are involved in our metabolism. And if we speed up our metabolism, we go through nutrients faster. So for that reason, you know, you need to make sure you've got what you need for the RDA, plus a little bit more. Iron and zinc are especially some of those nutrients that a lot of athletes fall short on, not just vegan, but athletes in general, because you can go through those uh, minerals pretty quickly. So as a daily insurance, just to make sure I get what I need, I recommend HEPO-7. So this is just seven nutrients, cover your basis uh, on a vegan diet, make sure you get everything you need, uh, calcium, omega-3s, iron, zinc, things like that. Gnarly protein power, powder, really good way, awesome vegan protein powder, seriously. The, the van vanilla and chocolate are amazing. Gnarly greens, I like the acai flavor, try that out. That's a great way to just know that I'm getting what I need. Even if I have a bad eating day, I've got my insurance. I've, I've, I've had my supplements to make sure I get what I need. So the benefits I've personally seen, uh, leaner body composition. You know, through high school, I play a lot of sports, but I was like 180 and just kind of, I don't know kind of not not pudgy but I didn't have real definition I I had a hard time like keeping a, a healthy body mass that was like muscular and, and kind of lean uh but once I switched over to more plants like it it was really quickly that I kind of dropped to like my base is now kind of 165 and it's just easier to stay that way it's just easier to stay leaner uh as on a plant-based diet Improved recovery. I mean, you know, Trevor and I are doing these hundred mile races. It's really important to recover, recover well and get back to training. And especially in our seasons, when we have multiple races going on, uh, you, you got to recover quickly and get back to training. And like recovery is the, this kind of hidden secret in, in training. If you can't recover well, and you're kind of just constantly damaging yourself, uh, you're not really going to see improvements in your training. So, so recovery should be a huge part of your training. It should be a priority. And <laughs> a huge part of that, you know, is, is nutrition, sleep and nutrition, 
and staying hydrated are like your, your three components of, of, of recovery. And if you're missing any of that, you're probably not gonna recover very well. Uh, improved training and race day performance. Again, because of the recovery, uh, I'm, I'm feeling much better going into races, more efficient training without injuries. Um, and race day performance, right? Your, your gut has to be healthy on race day to take in all that, <laughs> all those carbohydrates and, and all the random stuff that you're eating on race day. So uh, that's definitely improved from when I started ultra running. Better sleep, that's a huge one. Um, that, that's again, a huge element to recovery. So that's improved for me. Clearer skin from acne, man. I, uh, <laughs> I went through two really bad phases of acne and, and plants have really helped. I mean, it, it's not, it's the plants themselves but I think it's cutting out the greasy foods uh, that really helped me, right? Uh, Reduce fried foods in general, but fried meats and stuff really triggered acne for me and uh, some digestive issues. So luckily I've gotten through that. And, you know, it's, it's kind of pretentious, I guess, but it improves self view. You know, I, I, I feel good about helping doing my part in, uh, you know, for the most part, I should say, there's, there's a lot of things I can continue to do to improve the environment, but this is a big factor in improving the environment is your diet. Um, so I'm lowering my carbon footprint by eating this way and avoiding animal harm. So these are like reasons that apart from nutrition, you get this kind of trifecta benefit, uh, not just helping you, but the planet and the people around you. So yeah, no one size fits all. Like I do think most people can do well on this type of diet. They just need to talk to a professional, uh, you know, a nutritionist like myself to make sure you're doing it right. Like there's, there's so many different ways, uh, you know, the 80, 10, 10 vegan diet, raw, raw vegan, uh, starch based vegan. Um, you know, there's all these styles. So it's important to know within the vegan diet, which style fits you and what suits you right to your, uh, you know, fitness and, 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 and competitive goals. Right. So that's, that's also something if you're trying to make physical gains, it's really important to know what you're doing. And defeat disease prevention. Um, it's really cool that I've been able to see reversal of type two diabetes. So diabetes, uh, as, as I've seen in my experience is a nutrition based disease. So I've actually been able to take people off medication and reverse their diabetes. Again, you have to be pretty good about your diet to, to be off medication if you've had diabetes before, but it's really awesome and fulfilling to see that as a nutritionist happen in clients. Improved performance, that's happened a lot kind of almost across the board when I'm working with athletes, either going to vegan or just incorporating more uh, plants into their diet. Uh, I, I volunteer at a uh, cancer wellness house. So recovering from, from chemotherapy can be really difficult. You need to really pack in a lot of nutrients, kind of smoothies and juices are a good way to kind of get back uh, and, and utilize all those nutrients and absorb them well. So uh, I've loved it. I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, you know, I, I know Michael McKnight uh, presented on here. So there's a lot of varying, you know, things that work for people. No, it's, it's not always a one size fits all, you know, Michael's kind of on the other end of the spectrum, but it works for him, you know? Um, so, so really find out what works for you. And if it's not, you gotta, you gotta tweak something and, and maybe talk to a professional about that. So I'm going to give it up to Trevor. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask during uh, this and we can, uh, answer them throughout or at the end. Trevor. Thanks, Jesse. Um, so yeah, when we first started talking about doing this, uh, we wanted to present kind of two different uh, perspectives. Jesse kind of coming more from a scientific background and mine being fully anecdotal and experimental and figuring it out. So um, I've been vegetarian for like 13 years now and then uh, vegan for coming up on, on 10. Uh, eight or nine years. Um, and it, I really kind of made the transition at the same time that I was um, getting into running a bit more. Um, but one thing I noticed uh, when I did turn vegan is that I um, 
my recovery time increased dramatically or decreased, I should say, and uh, my energy increased. Um, kind of like Jesse was saying, the, the main reasons I started to go vegan were um, one, to reduce my environmental impact and also to uh, reduce animal suffering. I've always been an, an animal lover and that was kind of my main motivation. Um, that was why I went vegetarian. And then, and then uh, when I went vegan, it was kind of like a slower progression. Um, I realized there was still a lot of animal suffering in, in factory farming practices and stuff that came along with, with dairy and things like that. Um, but I started to notice as I cut out dairy from my diet that it eliminated GI problems that I had pretty much my entire life. Like it turns out I was probably um, uh, lactose intolerant <laughs> my whole life and I just never knew what that meant. I just kind of accepted all these issues. And as I started to cut those things out, they just all, all kind of disappeared. If you wanna go to the next slide, Jess. Um, so the biggest mistakes that I made when transitioning were one, I was, um, I wouldn't say I was a, a junk food vegan, but I definitely um, didn't necessarily jump right into the whole food plant-based diet. I, I did eat a lot of the, the fake meats and the, the Boca burgers and things like that. Um, really, because at first my main goal was to just eliminate uh, those sort of like meat products from my diet. And um, once I started to transition into the, the whole foods plant-based diet, when I noticed the, the health impacts it was having on me, um, the biggest mistake I made was that I was just not consuming enough calories. Um, you know, my, my energy was increased, but, but I would notice a lot of times after uh, workouts and things like that, I'd just be super sore. Um, I'd get out of bed and like almost collapse sometimes, you know, and uh, as soon as I realized that this diet that I, I had, um, everything is less caloric than on a, a junk food diet or, or even just like a standard American diet. Um, so once I realized that I just needed to increase my overall calories, all of those issues just, just went away. Um, and especially when I also learned that I need to sort of time my protein, um, you know, within 30 minutes or so, and we'll talk about this more um, after workouts to make sure that I'm absorbing that and uh, my muscles are kind of jump-starting that recovery. Next slide. So just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what a normal day-to-day -day diet looks for me. Um, usually I try to hit around 3000 calories and that's just sort of an average throughout the year. If it's a heavy training period, if I'm doing, you know, big, big vert months or hundred miles a week or anything like that, it usually will jump up to 4,000, sometimes 5,000, just depends, kind of eat, eat to hunger. Um, but generally speaking, uh, it's usually, you know, a moderate breakfast, usually oatmeal with fruits and seeds and, and things like that. Um, usually banana, blueberries, and then I'll incorporate hemp seeds and thing, things like that to get omegas. And, and uh, then later in the day, I'll usually just have, you know, a small piece of fruit for a snack uh, to tide me over until lunch. Lunch is usually like some sort of whole grain, um, usually a sandwich with like maybe tempeh or something like that on it um, and, and some veggies. Uh, Usually I'll, I'll have like a little snack of like carrots or things like that, things like that too. Just depends on where I'm at, if I'm at work and it's, it's more convenient. Um, before a run, I usually have a snack bar and uh, gnarly's BCAAs. And then after the run, I'll have a protein shake with carbs. And this is kind of where it comes into the, the importance and timing of recovery nutrition is you usually want to shoot for a three to one ratio of carbs to protein within 30 minutes of exercise. So what I really like to do is I'll use the gnarly vegan protein shake and I'll either blend that up with a banana or I'll just add like a couple tablespoons of uh, maple syrup to that to kind of add, add some extra carbs. Um, then dinner is usually, usually around a thousand calories or so. And I, I, I eat a lot of potatoes as, uh, <laughs> as was mentioned in the introduction. Um, a lot of potatoes and usually proteins like tofu or tempeh, beans, legumes, things like that and uh, a ton of veggies, um, roasted broccoli, carrots, things like that. Um, supplementation, Jesse definitely touched on this. Um, anecdotally, this is kind of what I do and this is what I found really works for my body. Um, I definitely take B12 every day and D3, especially in the winter, that's extra important for me because I'm not getting near as much sunshine. Um, and usually my D3 supplement has K2 as well. Um, 
I also take a vegan DHA, EPA, omega-3 supplement um, because there's not a whole lot of uh, plant food options to get those types of omega-3s. Um, I do zinc, iron, and I also get iodine from kelp, which is another thing that can be a little tricky to find. Foods I avoid, again, Jesse touched on this, uh, fried foods, processed foods, refined grains, refined sugars, and just junk food in general. Um, it's okay to eat those things every once in a while, uh, but they definitely increase your inflammation and make recovery a lot, a lot more of a challenge. Um, so you wanna stick mostly with, the, with whole foods. Um, as far as race day goes, uh, usually for a race, I'll wake up two or three hours early and eat just a small breakfast. Um, usually it's, it's like a bagel with some nut butter on it or something like that um, and a banana. I uh, just keep it really simple. Um, on race day, I will stick with more simple carbs. Like I'll, I'll do a white bagel instead of a whole wheat bagel, um, just because I find that sort of helps uh, me avoid GI issues throughout the day if it's a long race. Um, a whole lot of fiber tends to get a lot of things moving. And, and that's something I try to avoid uh, to make a whole lot of pit stops in a, in a hundred mile race. Um, during the race, I shoot for two to 300 calories. Um, and that's usually around 50 to 75 grams of carbohydrates. And just hydrate as necessary. Um, for me, those, the in-race nutrition kind of varies. Um, I try to I try to train with all kinds of different foods, whether it's like leftover pancakes I had for breakfast, or for me, what works really well is, uh, is maple syrup. Um, and there's also a lot of like uh, just liquid drinks, like getting your calories from liquid uh, is super helpful. Tailwind's a really popular one. Um, and then hydrate is necessary. Uh, if you can combine the two to where you're, you're getting your calories from your hydration, I find, I find that works very well and works the best for me. Um, and then after race, uh, I try to hit um, 60 grams of carbs and 20 grams of protein within 20 minutes of the race. Again, that's still kind of that same uh, gnarly protein combo with um, some maple syrup or a banana or something like that. And then usually within a couple hours, I try to have a full meal um, whatever that is. If it's a good race, I'll, I'll now down an entire pizza and, and some beer. Uh, if I'm having self-loathing because it was a terrible race, I might need something a little healthier. Um, and then I just wanted to uh, share a few quick recipes that I use. Um, you can feel free to screenshot these, or I believe we can uh, send this whole PowerPoint over to you guys in email form. Um, so a couple are, this is like my weekend standard, uh, either the, the protein pancakes or the protein waffles. Um, they work well before running if you want it, or if you're a fasted runner, they work, work really good for that good big meal after you get back from a long run or long workout. Um, the, the waffles are, are definitely higher in calories and have quite a bit more um, fat because there's so much oil in them. So I tend to like those more for recovery um, than a pre-race. Uh, too much oil kind of, it doesn't always sit, sit very good. So pre-race pancakes are great or pre-workout pancakes and uh, post-workout, the waffles are awesome, so. Uh, and I threw in a easy pumpkin chili, um, just cause it's that kind of time of year, I guess, where, where it's cold and these hearty foods are sounding good. Um, this is one I make and, and my family loves and uh, super easy. Um, if you want, you can do all this stuff from scratch, but I made it, the recipe is super easy. So you can just use cans um, from the grocery store, so one can of pumpkin puree, puree stuff like that. Um, feel free to screenshot it. This one's super easy. It takes like 20 or 30 minutes to make. You're basically just throwing a bunch of stuff in a pot and simmering it. So and the next one is uh, my personal favorite because it's kind of a, a nice sweet treat. Um, avocado ice cream. Super easy to make. You do need an ice cream maker to, to make it, um, but it's a lot easier than your traditional ice cream because you don't have to like uh, simmer, simmer anything. Uh, you just blend it all together and then let it cool and then churn it. So hopefully everyone can make use of those recipes. And then we just kind of wanted to open things up for a, for a Q and A. So if you have any questions for me or Jesse, please feel free to ask. And going back on Trevor's point too, like, oh, sorry, is there audio? Oh, I'm just hearing a little bit of uh, relay back, but Going back on what Trevor said, like I, I've worked in a clinical setting before and we test for sensitivities a lot. 
lactose intolerance is, is, is not a sensitivity. Intolerance means you don't have the enzyme to break down lactose. And uh, it turns out like a third of people uh, have that issue. So, uh, you know, and, and again, seeing these tests, having an intolerance can show up as a sensitivity and so many people have dairy issues. So, so if you're like wondering what's going on, I've, I've done a little video about this. Like the first thing you should try uh, is to cut out dairy to see if your, your, your GI symptoms will improve. Because again, it, it's so prevalent in, in humans. Uh, most mammals wean off of milk after adolescence. So uh, you've actually had a, like a genetic mutation if you can actually digest milk normally. So that's the first thing I would recommend trying, uh, not just because, you know, we're, we're, we're plant-based and, we, and that's how we roll. It's like, no, that's what I've seen in clinical settings. So give that a shot. Um, I don't know if, let's see if we can actually see Okay, there's, okay, I'm opening the chat. Okay, I don't, I don't see. If you click on the Q&A, Jesse, at the bottom. Oh, here we go, yep. There we go. So the first question is about uh, leucine. Um, you might want to take that, Jesse. That's not something I focus on too much. So if you have any info on that. That's uh, weird, I'm having a hard time seeing that. It is true, leucine can be a little bit lower. Um, but that is part of the BCAA mix that gnarly provides. It is a, it is, it is a branch chain amino acid. Um, so it can be a little low. If you're, if you're worried about branch chain amino acids, you, you can supplement with uh, BCAAs from gnarly. Uh, leucine is, is it's, it's funny with amino acids. There's some that like you don't want to go too crazy on. So even with BCAAs, you don't want to overdo it. Um, too much leucine can be a problem. So yeah, it can be a little lower in, in a vegan diet. Uh, so, so the BCAAs will help there. And, and when I do say that the vegan diet is complete minus the B12, there are some things that it is low in and sometimes it does require supplementation. Um, I, I don't use the BCA as much, but um, if, if you're worried about leucine and recovering and you're having a hard time on the vegan diet, that may be the first thing. The first thing I would look at if you are trying vegan um, would be to, yeah, like, like Trevor said, calories and protein. Uh, I wouldn't worry specifically about amino acids until you've kind of narrowed that, 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 that down to just that. So yeah, leucine can be low, uh, but uh, it's usually not much of an issue. I can't open the Q and A, so if you could <laughs> okay, yeah. the second question. Yeah, so the second question is, uh, do you have any recommendations for plant-based protein powders that don't contain artificial sweeteners or stevia? Both trigger migraines for me. I've been using an unsweetened whey protein. Oh man, without stevia even, uh yeah there's there's brown rice protein powders that are simply just brown rice uh you're definitely sacrificing some flavor <laughs> rice protein is is my least favorite i have tried it though like i've done elimination diet stuff myself and just on brown rice so try brown rice protein there are some that are just pea protein isolate too but again it's it might be kind of harder to 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 really make it taste good. So if you are doing the non-sweetened, maybe with like fruits, you can make it taste better. But uh, yeah, start with brown rice or isolated pea protein. I've used pea protein isolate personally. Um, and I've usually just blended it into smoothies. Uh, so like with a banana and ice and some, some non-dairy milk or something. That tastes decent. Uh, it mixes really well and it's worked out for me. Um, so that's definitely something you could try. Looks like there's one more in there. Do you want to read that, Trevor? Um, I think that's all we have Was that right it? now. Okay, cool. Good questions, though, guys. Um, yeah, you can feel free. I, I do a free 15-minute call if you guys want to have more detailed talk about like what, what you need to do, uh, where you're at if you want to be more plant-based or just in general. 
uh, feel free to reach out and my contact info, I think uh, you can just go through the slides and, and go to my website there. But great questions. Um, yeah, quick shout out to Trevor. He just had an amazing FKT finish. So if you guys are worried that this, uh, the White Rim Trail 100 miler uh, effort by quite a bit. So if you guys are worried that this doesn't work, like, you know, um, I think especially, I mean, you also had kind of like a, a lower volume season, right? Like even considering that you still had a great effort, you know? Thanks, man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's I I, I know it's been a, a a year for everybody, but um, just just shouting out to Trevor, like you you can definitely get it done on this type of diet. So I think that's it. Thanks thanks for your time, guys. And uh, Trevor, if you have any last words, we can we can close up. Oh, we just got a a question though. Okay. So, what percentage of macros should we aim for as vegan athletes? That's a great question. Um, I do I do focus on macros a little bit more with athletes for, for the typical client, not so much. I think 60, 20, 20 is a pretty good ratio, right? So again, you need to understand like if you're if you're really good at, at, at kind of the higher carb and that feels good to you, 60, 20, 20 for me is a great place to sit. Um, you know, it's, it's plenty of protein. It's, it's enough fat for me, but still kind of predominantly carbohydrates. So that's, that's kind of the ratio I like to see with athletes that I work with, but again, it can, it can change depending on how you react, but I would say strive for that uh, at first. I would agree. That's, that's basically what I shoot for too. And uh, I would say with just sort of a balanced diet, like your typical, you have a starch on a plate, uh, protein on a plate and veggies on a plate that kind of tends to be where you end up uh, right. most often anyway so yeah that's that's super whole food and, and going back to like the 80 10 10 philosophy like that's that's almost like a fruitarian diet right so it's 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 pretty easy to get like through flax seed and hemp seed and chia seed pretty easy to get 20 percent fat i mean it can almost be hard not to go above that on a normal vegan diet and again, protein, even without powder, you can make that happen with a lot of legumes, you know, beans and lentils. So yes, I think 60, 20, 20 is a good starting point. Then one other question is, um, what are some collagen alternatives for vegans? So vitamin C itself, like, so, so we produce collagen, right? But, but we do break down collagen as athletes and as people. Uh, but vitamin C helps the synthesis of collagen. So uh, it does improve uh, our collagen production. So vitamin C is a good way to do that. Um, unfortunately, a, a direct replacement of collagen uh, we don't have. Uh, but again, I, if you take care of your body, you know, collagen's mostly for tendons, ligaments, joints, things like that. Uh, you'll, you'll probably be okay. But if you are having pain in that area, um, you know, I, I do want to go over eventually kind of like, if you are to eat, uh, animal-based products, what would it be? And collagen's definitely up there, you know, collagen and broth, uh, definitely can provide some benefit, but I don't, I don't think that's necessarily needed unless you're kind of past, uh, that point of not recovering well, and you've checked all the boxes of enough calories, enough protein, things like that. So, um, unfortunately, there isn't a direct uh, substitution there. And I will just add, and this is obviously anecdotal, but um, I've been been vegan for almost a decade, so I, I clearly don't get any uh, external collagen in my body, and I have I rarely have any sort of issues with with joints or or any muscular issues or anything like that. Um, so I'm sure there's there's plenty of benefits to it. Don't know that it's entirely um, necessary on a vegan diet to, to stress about it too much. So. Totally agree. Totally agree. And that's all right. cur currently all the questions we have, unless any more come through here. That's so weird. I can't just click on it and see. <laughs> Maybe it's because you're sharing your screen. But. Yeah, it's because I can't minimize. So.
Cool. Well, cool. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. It's a little yeah, awkward just talking to myself on a computer screen, but hopefully it wasn't too awkward for you guys. No, that was awesome, man. Uh, thanks for participating and uh, we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Uh, and thanks for your time. Okay. Cool. I just stopped sharing, but are we still? <laughs> People are just slowly. I guess we'll see you later, man, and officially end. That was fun. Right on, dude. Have a and good one. And congrats again on the kid, man. I'm excited to hear more about how that's oh, going. Oh yeah, down the line, we'll get out. We'll get out, man. We'll talk cool. more. Right on, dude. All right, later. All right, see you.